Agile with a capital A has completely destroyed programming. And in this video, we're going to talk about how we got there and what we can do to fix it. This all started during the application development crisis of the 90s where industry experts estimated that it took three years to deliver any sort of software. Businesses move considerably faster than that. And so during those three years, the requirements would inevitably change. And by the time it was delivered, the software was obsolete. Then came the Agile Manifesto for software development, which completely changed the game because it allowed software developers to develop things more efficiently. It outlined the right way to do software development and even though that was done decades ago, that manifesto still holds true today. To start off, you want individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And so what this means is you want high performing teams that trust each other, they will hold each other accountable, but they're not going to get bogged down with a ton of process or a ton of tools. It doesn't mean that you can't use tools, especially with things like continuous integration. You want to make sure that you can test the app, deploy the app. You don't wanna do all of that manually. That's an area where tools come in handy. Even having processes that make sense for the people doing them, that makes sense as well. Like if you're constantly doing something, then codify that into a process and say, this is why it's important to us because it's helped us move faster. Another point of this manifesto is you want working software over comprehensive documentation. Back in the day, people would put together these huge requirements documents that outline every single possible edge case, every single scenario. It took them months to put together and by the time they were done with it, it was out of date. So the point of this part is you want to prioritize getting working software into the hands of your users or your stakeholders so they can tell you whether or not the software is solving the problem or if it's not. Documentation is completely fine though. It's not to say that you cannot have it. There are situations where it makes sense. I myself, I'm over documenting a project that I'm on right now because it literally touches every single part of the application. And I want to make sure that that is well documented so we know if something went wrong, what might have went wrong, and it'll hopefully make debugging issues easier. You also want customer collaboration over contract negotiations. This gets back to having working software. If you're shipping out working software on a constant basis and you are getting feedback from your customers or your stakeholders, then you know you're moving in the right direction. The contract negotiations part can be a little bit weird. It's not necessarily saying that you are signing a contract for some amount of money. It could be as simple as someone saying, hey, I need all these edge cases outlined before I can even start working on anything at all. That's not a good idea. You want to actually get in and start building something and get people using the thing so you know, is that edge case even something that people will encounter? And another point outlined in this manifesto is you want to respond to change as opposed to following a plan. Again, instead of having a comprehensive list of things that you need to build out, you wanna start off building things. And then if the requirements change, you want to be able to respond to that. It's okay to throw away work. It's much better to throw away a month of work than to continue down that path for another three months because you already committed to it. This is also why I think annual planning or quarterly planning is a complete waste of time because you're trying to lock in all of these things, but a lot can change in a quarter. A lot can definitely change in a year. And there's really a whole set of these principles that you can follow. I'll leave a link down below the like button. Go check it out. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about it. But let's actually get into how Agile has ruined the software industry because everything I've outlined so far with the Agile Manifesto it sounds pretty good, right? Modern day software development has largely thrown out all of those teachings and most of the time people are just blindly following scrum or blindly following safe and both of those frameworks were created to really appease business people they weren't created to help out software engineers they were created so business people knew how to work with software engineers there certainly are some useful teachings such as story pointing that can be really helpful for teams to talk about complexity in a non-biased way. Retrospectives allow teams to improve over time and breaking work down into small deliverable increments between one to four weeks of time. That's great too, because you can deliver software much quicker. However, in practice, all of those have pretty big holes in them. Story pointing, it's largely there to benefit business stakeholders to know how much is this team delivering or are we increasing velocity over time? And story pointing, it's sort of turned into this game of trying to guess what everyone else is going to point. So you don't have to talk about the complexity because you have enough stuff that you're working on and this one hour of refinement isn't going to be enough time to talk about those complexities anywhere. So 
Let's just appease the stakeholders, give them their story points, and then we can move on. Another downside is story points don't really encapsulate effort these days. A lot of times it just like falls back to time because again, business people want to know is this going to be delivered in two weeks or four weeks, which is inherently flawed with software development. You can't estimate how long it's going to take to build something. It's similar to a construction project. Like you can say that a road is going to be built in a year. It'll probably be built in three years though. Similar to software, if I say something's going to be built in a week, it might be built in half a week or it might take three weeks. Then you have retrospectives, which have just turned into a long list of grievances that never get prioritized. So the team gets to complain about what's going on, but they don't really have the time to fix those things because it's not prioritized to fix those things. So even though it's supposed to be continuous improvement and I have seen it happen, it's not that it doesn't happen, but more often than not, those things are just things that get complained about and then no one actually goes off and fixes them. And then breaking work down into smaller increments, while it sounds great in theory, in practice, this is just sort of turned into waterfall in disguise because those increments are very rarely delivered to customers. Depending on the company or the team, stakeholders may not be looking at it on like any sort of regular basis. And so you're just breaking down these increments into deliveries that take months to build out, which sounds very close to waterfall, except you don't have the comprehensive documentation. So I don't know, maybe waterfall would be better than modern day scrum. Don't at me in the comments or maybe do, it'll be good for engagement. All right, so I just threw a lot of stuff at you and you're probably wondering, well, what is the root of the problem? And really it's just that business people don't understand how to develop software, but they are then being responsible for the delivery of software. And you don't really have to look too far away either. Like Scrum and Safe have these ceremonies baked in that are disguised as being helpful for developers, but really, again, in practice, they all end up being things that are used for business people. Standups, which are supposed to be about talking about problems on the team from a day-to-day -day basis and unblocking yourselves, have turned into status updates that no one really pays attention to. And if you try to get into solutioning things, people kind of despise that because it's now taking time out of their day. Backlog refinement has largely turned into product managers coming in with a set of user stories ready to go. Tons of requirements already defined and just asking the team, hey, can you story point this? I need my velocity. I need to know like how, how much time this is going to take as opposed to, you know, how much effort it's going to take. When in reality, the best backlog refinements that I've been in are the ones where there are fewer requirements and you're just looking at designs and you as a team are talking about how are we going to build this? What are the requirements? It gives the team, the development team, much more freedom to actually define those things. And then you have sprint demos, which are largely based on like vanity metrics, like is velocity going up, is velocity going down? And then there's a little bit of time to talk about the actual software, but that's almost a secondary thing. And again, the best teams that I've been on that use demos to just demo the software it's hugely valuable. You get tons of insight from stakeholders, tons of insight from folks that you normally wouldn't be talking to. And sometimes their feedback isn't helpful. Most of the time though, it's super helpful and it completely changes the direction of a product. Okay, so how do we actually fix this problem with Agile? How do we make it useful to us? Well, we need to go back to the basics. We need to go and see what the manifesto for agile software development has taught us. So those individuals and interactions over processes and tools, what that really means is developers and stakeholders need to talk to each other. They need to be on an equal footing. The people who are building the stuff know what the issues are going to be. They know, hey, we're gonna need an error screen here, or hey, we actually don't need to build this out because we have this in another spot. It would be much quicker for us to just reuse this as opposed to reinventing the wheel again. But again, you'll still want those like tools and processes that make sense. Having automated nightly builds that go out so stakeholders can test the product that they are working on with you, that is hugely helpful to them. And not having to do that manually is a huge burden off of your shoulders, which gets into working software over comprehensive documentation. You want your stakeholders to be testing it. And once you're out of MVP, you want your customers to be testing this product on a regular basis and you want to be collecting feedback to know what should we be building next. And it's not to say that you don't want comprehensive documentation. Building software is expensive. So if you can use tools like Figma to outline, this is how we want the app to look or we expect it to look, 
those are really helpful. Sometimes you'll have to change those designs to make sure that it's technically feasible to build, but that's hugely helpful because it's a lot easier to change some Figma screens than it is to rewrite an entire application. And then you have customer collaboration over contract negotiations. This gets back into backlog refinement. Product managers should not be coming in with a huge list of requirements. They need to know what the product should solve and they need to be ready to answer any questions that the development team has and having designs ready so the team can look through them. Those are really the main things that you need in place. But from there, the team should be able to define, these are what the requirements should be. This is what it should look like. And having the flexibility to push back to say, those designs, they're way too complicated. Or, hey, actually this design is really great and I hope we can use it in other areas because it's super elegant. It makes us move faster. But you wanna create that space where engineers are an equal party to contribute their ideas. Otherwise, if it's just a long list of requirements, we're just checking a box, which gets into responding to change over following a plan. We're building software, not hardware. It's inherently going to change over time, especially as we build out more and more, we're gonna realize, hey, we actually need to change some of these things. The manifesto for agile software development is not about delivering more faster. It's about delivering more business value in a quicker amount of time, but you're largely going to be delivering like the same amount of code, but it's going to be the correct code or close to correct code as opposed to being completely wrong. So that's really what agile is all about. And while I have you here, can we just completely throw out deadlines because they're never correct, they're never accurate, and it just doesn't encapsulate how software development is. You could have something that was projected to take three months that could actually be done in a couple of weeks, depending on what amount of scope you cut or how you approach developing the software. But you might also have something that's going to take four months or five months, but it's going to be the right thing. And ideally during those like many months, you are releasing alpha software to your customers so they can test it out. Ideally, you can release any sort of MVP within six weeks. If it's any longer than that, then the project just might be too big. Anyway though, if you wanna learn more about the manifesto for agile software development, that link is still in the description down below the subscribe button. If reading isn't for you, YouTube thinks that you're going to like this video next. And that's it, that's the video.